Hello everyone and I hope you all are doing great. Welcome back to the channel once again and today we will be talking about a very interesting topic which is theoretically very important for the exam and you can expect one question from here as well. So we are going to talk about yes Amazon CloudFront signed URLs and cookies. So if you are ready let's begin. So before starting, let's talk about the terms that are going to be most frequently used. So I hope everyone is aware of what a signed URL is. Okay, so let's divide this into two parts. So what is signed? So when we use the term signed, we relate it to something that has a signature or digital signature and which conveys that it is a protocol showing that a message is authentic. So when we correlate it with a file that is signed, then you get a signature attached to it that makes the receiver trust or believe that he or she has received the file from you because it has your signature. And on the other hand, when you think of cookies, so I know most of you are aware of what cookies are. So if you don't, then nothing to worry about. So you should remember cookies are like a piece of data that the website you visit sends you and your browser stores it in your computer. So what happens if that cookie gets stored in your machine? So the most relatable example that I would uh, give you is that let's suppose you visited Amazon or Flipkart and you searched for headphones. So then if you have allowed cookies on your browser, then the next time you visit any other site, you will see ads from Amazon and Flipkart based on the search history that you already have made, uh, isn't it? So you will be thinking like how come this site knows what I searched on Amazon and Flipkart? He knows because with the help of cookies okay so i hope the terminologies are cleared so let's move on if you see the visualization here so as we already have discussed cdn and i hope you remember that cdn uh, and what cdn does is we place our proxy servers close to our customers so that we can store or cache most frequently access static files and deliver the static content in a fast and effective way so here as when with uh, CloudFront, as this is also a CDN, we have our proxy service placed closer to our customers. So I hope you haven't forgotten what an edge location is, but let us just recap it once again. So an edge location is where an end users actually accesses services located at AWS. So they are located in most of the major cities around the world and are specifically used by CloudFront CDN to distribute content to end users and in turn it reduces latency. So when we speak of data or content distribution, we must also speak about content restriction. Okay, so let's see the visualization again. So the end user here speaks to the edge location and in turn the edge location acts as a proxy through which we are able to communicate to the origin server and we get our data back. And you must focus on point 1 and 2 in the green here and let us discuss content restriction. Okay, so, so the question here that we are going to answer is that how to control user access to a private content. Okay, so there are two points that I have mentioned here. So the first point is basically restricting access to files in CloudFront edge caches. So last time I hope you remember that we discussed something about geo restrictions and third party geolocation service where we can restrict the usage. So here there are two important things that we will be having and we will discuss. So one of them is signed URL and the other one is signed cookies. So the second one is restricting access to files in your origin by doing one of the following. So the first one that we have is set up an origin identity or origin access identity OAI for your Amazon S3 bucket where we can secure the content in our Amazon S3 bucket so that users can access it through CloudFront but cannot access it directly by using URLs of S3 or Amazon S3 URLs. So this we have already discussed before as well, but we need to put it across so for better context. So if you haven't watched the video that I have placed for Amazon S3 signed URLs, pre-signed URLs, please go and have a look. Okay, so here in OAI, it is not required to use signed URLs, but we have to do here is, so first we what we do is we create the special CloudFront user called an origin access identity and associate it with our CloudFront distribution. Then we give the origin access identity permissions to read the files in your S3 bucket or our S3 bucket. And then ultimately we remove permissions from anyone else to use the Amazon S3 URLs to read the files. 
so that the users can only access it via CloudFront. Okay, so this is a small brief summary about what we have already discussed. So next is we can configure custom headers for a private HTTP server. Uh, that is the custom origin so remember if you want cloudfront to get your files from a custom origin the files must be publicly accessible so you might think if it is publicly accessible then how will you restrict the first point that you need to understand is we need to update our cloudfront distributions to begin forwarding a new header to our custom origin and once you have updated so we have to update our application to accept the new header as a confirmation that the request is coming from CloudFront. Uh, then when viewer requests no longer include the header that you are replacing, update your application to no longer accept the old header as a confirmation that the request is coming from CloudFront itself. Okay, so these are some of the ways we can restrict access, but we are discussing signed URL and cookies. So let's check that. So that is why I did not discuss much on signed URLs and cookies now so that we can discuss uh, later on in the video. Okay. So currently we have already discussed like set up origin access identity and configure custom headers. So let's move on to signed URLs. So now let's talk about how we can configure CloudFront to require that user access your files using either signed URLs or signed cookies. Okay. So here I will give a small example that I have already explained before but this will be in context to CloudFront. So let's suppose you are a movie provider like you have your OTT platform like Netflix or Amazon Prime or Woot. So the user sitting in London requests a movie that is on rent. So what the origin tells CloudFront is that this user is allowed access to the movie for two days and post which we will be getting it expired or post which it will get expired. So what CloudFront does is it creates a signed URL and provides it to the user so that the user can watch the movie for two days and it will have that expiration time of two days. Okay, post which he'll not be able to watch the movie again. So as we discussed about signed URL and cookies, a signed URL includes additional information, for example, expiration date and time that gives you more control over access to your content. The restriction which can be put if you create signed URLs or cookies. So the first thing is an ending date or time after which the URL is no longer valid. Second one is which is optional. So the date and time that the URL becomes valid like a premiere show of a movie. So let's suppose like from 5th of February it will be valid or let's suppose from July 10th at 10 p.m. From that time it will be valid. Okay, so the third one is optional as well. The IP address or range of the address of the computers that can be used to access your content. Like you give access to your team. Okay, with a defined set of IP addresses. And one more thing actually that is important is like signed URL and cookies are secured using private key from a public or private key pair. And we use RSA as such a one for signing URLs and cookies. And CloudFront doesn't accept any other algorithm. So use only RSA SHA1 algorithm. So we need to understand how long the URL should be valid. So there are two points here. We can distribute private content using a signed URL that is valid only for a short time. And we can distribute private content using a signed URL that is valid for a longer time, possibly for years. And the difference between signed URL and signed cookies is that a signed URL is a URL that provides limited permission and time to make the request. So generally it is used for single files. Okay, so single file will be having a single URL and based on that you can make a difference of uh, restriction based on time or permission. And a signed cookie is a cookie that provides limited access and time to make requests to a set of files. So this on the other hand can be used for multiple files. So what happens here is like uh, for an example if I tell you like there are 50 files and all those 50 files can have the same cookie header okay so based on that you can access the whole of the 50 files so now let's see how does CloudFront work with Amazon S3 while using a signed URL okay so first thing in our cloud distribution or CloudFront distribution we need to specify one or more trusted signers which are the AWS accounts that we want to have permission to create signed URLs and secondly we have to develop our application or you need to develop your application to determine whether user should have access to our content and to create signed URLs or the files or part of your application that you want to restrict access to. Then it moves to the user where the user actually requests a file for which you want to have a signed URL 
then the third point comes here that you see here actually our application verifies that the user is entitled to access the file that we have signed and they have paid for the access to the content and they have met some requirements for access like you have a subscription to the platform then our application then creates and returns a signed url to the user and the signed url here allows the user to download or stream the content okay the fourth thing uh, cloudfront uses the public key to validate the signature and confirms that the url hasn't been tampered with and if the signature is invalid the request is rejected and if the signature is valid cloudfront looks at the policy statement in the url to confirm that the request is valid and then forwards the request and the fifth point is that cloudfront determines whether the file is already in the edge cache if not then it forwards the request to the origin and returns the file to the user so i'm very skeptical talking too deep in this topic because most of these actually will be used for our understanding itself and not much for the exam but it is good to discuss isn't it so i hope it was clear let's move on so now let's talk something about signed cookies okay so the cloudfront signed cookies allows you to control who can access your content when you don't want to change your current url or when you want to provide access to multiple restricted files okay so here as well similar to signed url we develop our application to determine whether a user should have access to our content if so to send three set cookie headers to the viewer so here we don't sign urls we pass set cookies in the header then the user signs into our website and either pays for the content then our application returns the set cookie headers in the response and the viewer stores those cookie name value pairs okay and the important part here is that the user's browser or other viewer gets the name value and adds them to the request in the cookie header this is the signed cookie okay and then cloudfront uses the public key to validate the signature in the signed cookie so here whenever the user accesses the file it sends the cookie in the header that's how it proves that it has authority to access the file and that's how a signed cookie is born okay so here you must understand that uh, we pass a set cookie header okay to the user so that it can store it in the computer so again when it sends back these signed cookies along with the request we validate them and then we confirm that this user has access to the content so next thing that we should understand here is that when does cloudfront check the expiration date and time in a signed url so there are two things that we need to talk about this is very important the first thing is web distribution that is most commonly for http requests so here cloudfront checks the expiration date and time in a signed url at the time of the http request so the example here is that let's suppose you have file for 50 minutes okay so you have access to the file for 50 minutes okay and it's a large file and let's imagine that it takes 30 minutes to download it okay remember there is a delta of 20 minutes so if the user starts downloading the file with 10 minutes remaining for it to expire then also the file will be downloaded until there is a tcp connection loss if not you will be able to download the file but if the tcp connection is lost and you restart the download again and the time has already expired then you won't be able to download it again so until and unless your time has expired and the tcp connection doesn't break you can download it at the nth minute also so what if there are bulk files let's suppose 50000 files so we make a get request for each file and you will be only be able to download those files until the time expires post which your get requests will fail okay so let's suppose you have 50000 files and uh, every file you make a get request for them to download then let's suppose at the 30000th file the connection or the url expires so when you make a get request again it will obviously fail so the next thing that we want to discuss is rtmp distributions so rtmp distribution is used for adobe flash media and cloudfront checks the expiration time in a signed url at the start of the play event and if the client starts a play of a media file before the expiration time passes cloudfront allows entire media file to play so it's a good thing right even at the 49th minute you can watch the whole content but remember that adobe designed flash has its end of life by december 31st 2020 uh, so as a result cloudfront actually will no longer support adobe flash media server and will be deprecating real-time messaging protocol that is rtmp distributions by december 31st 2020 so when to use signed urls and when to use signed cookies okay so if you have like if you're using rtmp distributions 
it's better to use signed urls and if you want to restrict access to individual files then you must obviously use signed urls here and if the client actually does not support cookies then you should actually use signed urls but when to use signed cookies so if you want to provide access to multiple files or if you want to provide access to multiple restricted files then you can use the signed cookies so it's very well explained as well and if you don't want to change your current urls then you can basically use the signed cookies that you won't have the need to change the current urls okay and if you want to provide access to multiple restricted files then also it is used okay so i hope uh, this understanding was uh, good enough like when to use signed urls and when to use cookies and uh, there is one more thing that you need to understand and that what are the restrictions to creating a signed url or cookies so if your urls contain any of the following query string parameters you cannot use either signed url or signed cookies okay so what are these parameters so one is the expires the second one is policy third one is signature and fourth one is key pair id so why it happens is because like crowdfront actually assumes that urls that contain any of those query string parameters are basically signed urls and therefore it won't even look at the signed cookies okay so we must understand like if you have these four parameters like if it already contains expires or it already has a policy or if it already has a signature or it already has a key pair id then it won't consider as a signed url or cookie okay so if that was clear let's move on so in the end we need to talk about the difference between cloudfront signed urls and the aws s3 pre-signed url so before that if you haven't seen the video that i have for s3 pre-signed url then please do check that out for a better perspective so here the first point that you have here is for signed urls for cloudfront so it requires that your users access your private content by using special cloudfront signed urls or signed cookies that we already discussed now and it requires that your users access your content by using cloudfront urls not urls that access content directly on the origin server that i think is obviously clear and users can access files using signed url and signed cookies and users can access to the signed urls for both http servers or s3 bucket okay so this provides a clear advantage like you can use it for both http server and s3 bucket and what are the restrictions an ending date and time which after which the url is no longer valid if you have a date and time that the url becomes valid that also you can have as a restriction or ip address or a range of ip addresses of the computers that can be used to access your content okay so i think we have already discussed this and what happens when we use s3 pre-signed url so what the major differences are like users don't have direct access to the s3 bucket if you don't have direct access to the s3 bucket you need a pre-signed url which already has a signature of the owner okay of the aws account who is trying to give permissions for you to access or download the content and this is specific to files that are stored on s3 and this becomes the biggest uh, difference here like this is specifically for files stored on s3 and pre-signed urls must be encapsulated with the owner's credentials to provide the access for users to read or upload files i already told this and you need to provide security credentials bucket name object key http method where actually for put is used for uploading files and get is used for downloading or uh, reading the content and expiration date and time and this is common like i think for signed urls and pre-signed urls okay and you can use the pre-signed url multiple times up to the expiration date and time okay so i think this is also common for both thank you for joining in for this short session on aws cloudfront signed urls and cookies i hope you liked it so if you did please hit the like button put a comment on what you liked what you didn't and please, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe because we are going to get more new content okay, on this channel. So until then, it's Pytholic signing off.